live and recording. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today on this Tuesday, August 23rd. I will call to order uh, our afternoon land use and public hearing. If you'll all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Attorney Ingalls, do we have certification of the agenda today? We do, Mr. Chair. Items 2A and 2B did not require any specialized notice, but they were properly noticed under the open meetings laws. Item 3 required published and posted notice, which was accomplished on July 28th and July 25th, respectively. Item 3B was properly noticed for August 9th and continued until today. And then finally, item 3C required published notice, which was accomplished on August 18th, 2022. With that, you have proper notice and jurisdiction on all items. Thank you, Mr. Ingalls. Do any commissioners have disclosures for items on this agenda? I have none, thank you. No, sir. And I have none either. With that, we'll move to item two on our agenda today, which is our land use meeting agenda items. Item 2A is the Voorhees exemption, project file EX 2022-001. Trevor Bedford presenting for staff. Hi, Trevor. <coughs> hey. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, Trevor Bedford, representing Plenty Services. Before you is the Voorhees exemption. Project number is EX 2022-001. Um, proposed is an exemption to create two parcels from a 67.2 acre parcel. One parcel will be slightly less than 35 acres in size. It will be 32.13 acres. Uh, the intent of the exemption article nine of the subdivision resolution is to establish criteria um, and review process whereby the Board of County Commissioners may grant exemptions from the definition of subdivision and subdivided land. The exemption process includes submittal of an application followed by a referral agency review period. Following the resolution of any outstanding issues, a public meeting is scheduled before the Board of County Commissioners no significant referral comments were received. Um, we did have the state engineer's office require that the two wells that are currently on the property be re-permitted and the applicant added notes to the exemption exhibit and has provided evidence that they have um, already begun the application process. The site is indicated by the red star and is generally in the southeastern portion of the county. Um, the site here is outlined in red and is located along a curve in Lake Gulch Road, west of its intersection with Highway 83, and it is surrounded by um, other A1 properties. As shown in the aerial, there is an existing residence on the eastern portion of the property. Um, this property is surrounded by agricultural and large lot residential development. And the dashed line on here generally shows the location of the proposed parcel division. A little bit of background on the property. Um, this is based on the applicant's narrative. The, the family homesteaded the area in the 1800s, um, and eventually the applicant's parents inherited the property around the 1970s. They had an intention of providing three 35-acre parcels for their children. Um, recent surveys show that now the property is 35 acres and in one parcel and a 67.2-acre parcel. So they are just a few acres short of what they need to create three parcels. Um, the applicant has suggested this may be due to um, previous right-of-way dedications to Lake Gulch Road and possibly also due to um, some land swaps um, historic that for um, cattle runs. Um, this is the exemption exhibit. This shows the proposed parcels at 32.13 acres and 35.07 acres. Each parcel has an existing well that, again, they'll just need to re-permit um, prior to any new development. In accordance with Section 903 of the Subdivision Resolution, the request must comply with one of the five listed criteria to be exempted from the definition of the term subdivision. 
Specifically, section 903.05 authorizes the exemption for other divisions of land affected by a deed recorded in the office of the Douglas County Clerk and Recorder that the board determines is not within the purposes of this resolution. This has been broadly interpreted to include both existing and proposed divisions of land accomplished by the recordation of deeds. We do have two proposed conditions. Um, so staff has evaluated the exemption request in accordance with Article 9 of the Douglas County Subdivision Resolution. Should the board find that the criteria for the exemption are met, the following conditions should be considered for inclusion in the motion. The first condition is all commitments and promises made by the applicant and or applicant's representative during the public meeting um, and or agreed upon in writing and included in the public record have been relied on by the Board of County Commissioners in approving the application. Therefore, such approval is conditioned upon the applicant's full satisfaction of all commitments and promises. And we do have a second condition that we would recommend. This was um, unfortunately not included in the staff report that was provided, but this is a standard comment that we usually include on, on this type of project um, to allow for any technical corrections that are necessary. So the second one we would recommend is prior to recordation of the exemption exhibit, technical corrections to the exhibit shall be made to the satisfaction of Douglas County. And this concludes staff's presentation. Um, I am available to take any questions on the staff report. Um, otherwise, the applicant is available for questions. Trevor, thank you for that presentation. Any questions for staff? Trevor, I'd just like to thank you for bringing this forward. As I was reading through this, I was amazed that once again, there's something in our regulations, in our um, guidelines, regulations, that allow this to go forward since there's not enough land to make three 35-acre parcels. So whoever wrote all those years ago did a good job of anticipating what was going to come up. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Further questions or comments for staff? No questions. And I have none either. With that, uh, I'll call the applicant forward if you'd like to just state your name and where you're from, please. Yes, please. Hello. I am uh, Dana Van Marder, and this is my sister Diana Voorhees and her husband Mark. Um, this has been a long process for us, so we're grateful to finally be in front of you all. <laughs> um, and I would just like to say it was my, it was my, my grandfather's intent to leave all of us grandchildren property to give us a step up in life. And with the passing of my folks, it's, it's coming to fruition, but it's been a long process. And, you know, they lost to the right of ways. They lost some definitely in the 2000s. Um, the acreage that was on that piece that was supposed to get us the three parcels. So we, Julie, thank you for considering us. And if you have any questions for us. Well, just a couple. Uh, first, Ms. Van Marder, if, uh, if staff can pull up the two conditions. Let me just confirm, uh, as the applicant, or do you agree with those two conditions as presented? Yes. You do, okay. Uh, any questions for the applicant? I have none, thank you. No questions. And I have none either. Uh, with that, I will open it up for any citizen comment on this item. Is there any citizen comment either in the room or online with regard to this agenda item? Thank you, Commissioner. I have no online comment. Okay, and with that, I'll close citizen comment and bring it back to the board for any further discussion and or a motion. I have a motion to approve the Voorhees exemption because it does meet all of the approval criteria with two conditions as presented. Project file EX 2022-001. Second. So there's a first and second on the floor. Is there any further discussion? You know, I'll just add as a comment, we really appreciate you spending your time with us this afternoon and the work that you've done with staff to get it to this point. No doubt the passing of your relatives have led to some significant changes and we're just excited to partner with you uh, as your county government to serve your interests. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye. and that carries three to zero. Congratulations. Um, with that, we'll move on to the next item for today, which is item 2B, the Canyon South Filing 3 Final Plat, Project File SB 2022-003. Heather Scott presenting for staff. Hi, Heather. Good afternoon. If, if I could ask a question, if, if we are looking at time frame, is this something you might consider seeing if we could do a, a faster version through it? I think Doug might, or Lance has walked us through how to do this before. 
You know, would the board be interested in an abbreviated presentation on this item 2B? I would. Yeah, me too. And I would as well. So with that, Heather, I guess what we'll ask is just a, an abbreviation. Uh, I think we've all read the, the packet. You did a great job presenting that for us. Absolutely. Would the board like to ask the, app, or the staff any questions? I don't have any questions. No, we went through this a few months ago when we heard from, actually I believe it was the same applicant, to kind of do a um, uh, adjust the density and um, I, I, this is all pretty fresh for me. Okay. Is the applicant here and did the applicant want to state anything for the record? Okay, I'm seeing a shaking head. That sounds good. Um, so let me open this item up for any citizen comment either in person or online. Is there any citizen comment? I have no online comment. Okay, and with that, I'll close citizen comment and bring it back to the board for any further discussion and or a motion. You know, Mr. Chair, would it be appropriate to make sure that the applicant does uh, accept the five conditions as presented in the staff report? Absolutely, and sir, if you wanna just uh, approach the podium, state your name and where you're from uh, and whether or not you accept the conditions. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, Richard Cross uh, with Hines, 1144 15th Street, Suite 2600, Denver, Colorado, 80202. Uh, yes, we accept the five criteria. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. If it pleases the board, Mr. Chair, I do have a motion to approve the Canaan South Filing 3 Final Plat because it does meet all the approval criteria with five conditions as presented, Project File SB 2022-003. Second. So there's a first and second on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 And that carries three to zero. Okay, and with that, we will move on to our next item, which is our item three public hearing agenda items. Um, we do have an item 3A that is, uh, I believe, set to be continued to September 27, 2022. It is Sterling Ranch Preliminary Plan Number 7, Project File SB 2021-057. Uh, Brett Thomas presenting for staff. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, the applicant has requested a continuance of the hearing to September 27th, 2022 at 2.30 p.m. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions for staff? No, sir. Did I read in the packet there was some conflict of a schedule or something? Is that what caused this? <laughs> Correct. The packet included the request letter from the applicant. There was a scheduling issue. Thank you. Okay. And I will ask if there's any citizen comment either in person or online regarding this item. I have no online comments, sir. Okay. Thank you, Troy. With that, I'll close citizen comment, bring it back to the board for any further discussion or a motion. I have a motion to continue Sterling Ranch prelim preliminary plan number seven, project file SB 2021-057 until September 27th, 2022 at 2.30 p.m. Second. So we have a first and second on the floor. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. Aye. Aye, and that carries three to zero. Thanks, Brett. Um, and with that, we'll move to item 3B, which is a resolution adopting amendments to Douglas County Zoning Resolution Section 3, Agricultural 1 District 4, Large Rural Residential District 5, Rural Residential District 21, Use by Special Review, and 23, Home Occupations. CJ Gates presenting for staff. Hi, CJ. Hey, Commissioners. Thank you. Before we start, commissioners, I have a few things to hand out to you. Uh, the first will be a packet. This is a memo with additional correspondence that we did send upstairs to you all yesterday, the 22nd. That was posted online today. It is also under the project file. And then I also have another packet for you, additional public comments. And these were received either last night after 5 p.m. or this morning uh, before 2.30. So. The additional public comments will be marked Exhibit 1 for today's public hearing. The other items are already in your official packet, so they don't have to be separately labeled. Which one are those? Thank you very much. Thank you. The first packet you're being handed is already in the electronic records, but for your convenience, I'll be labeling Exhibit 1 now.
Good afternoon, commissioners. This is CJ Gates representing Planning Resources. The request is for approval of the amendments to the Douglas County Zoning Resolution, Section 23, Home Occupations. The process is defined per Section 109 of the Douglas County Zoning Resolution as stated within my staff report. Staff presented the project file DR 2022-001 to the Planning Commission at a hearing held on June 20th, 2022. The Planning Commission unanimously voted to continue the item until July 11th hearing date. The Planning Commission ultimately voted to recommend the item for further study at the Ju July 11th hearing. Staff then presented the proposed amendments to the Board of County Commissioners at a public hearing on July 12th. The Board continued the item and directed staff to prepare revisions to the amendments that would address their concerns. Staff presented three different options to the Board at a work session on July 18th. During that work session, the board directed staff to further edit the proposal and bring forth two options at the upcoming public hearings. Staff presented the two options to the Planning Commission at a public hearing held on August 1st and to the board on August 9th, where the item was continued to the August 23rd date. In accordance with the board's direction, staff met with the board at a work session held on August 15th. Staff presented to the board how the county regulates accessory buildings within the RR, LRR, and A1 zone districts. The board gave staff further direction on what to bring forth to the meeting this afternoon. At the August 9th public hearing, staff presented proposed amendments to section 23 of the Douglas County Zoning Resolution. The board continued the item and directed staff to prepare revisions to the amendments that would address concerns raised about the proposed limits on the area within the accessory structure that may be used in conjunction with the class two home occupations and concerns raised about the notification of abutting landowners and homeowners association for class two home occupation permits. As a result, staff submitted a staff report on August 11th with revisions to section 23. The, revis the revisions included section 2305 was revised to define the maximum area of an accessory structure used for a class two home occupation as 3000 square feet. Section 2310 was revised to allow for a use by special review process for class two home occupations that exceed the criteria for maximum area of use or the maximum number of non-resident employee employees. Section 2306 was revised to require an applicant to notify abutting landowners and homeowners association if applicable. At a board work session on August 15th, 2022, staff was directed to provide an additional red line draft of section 23 for consideration at the August 23rd public hearing. In accordance with the board's direction, staff eliminated the language within subsection 2305.01 pertaining to the 3,000 square foot limitation for a class two home occupation. The proposed language reads, such use may be conducted within the dwelling, provided that the total area for such purpose shall not exceed 50% of the floor area of the dwelling, one permitted accessory structure or both. In accordance with the board's direction, a notification process for all class two home occupation permit applications is also included. After evaluating the proposed revisions, referral comments, and staff report, the board may approve, approve with modifications, remand to the Planning Commission, or deny. This concludes my presentation, and staff is here for any questions if you may have any. CJ, thank you for that presentation. Any questions for staff? So CJ, I would just like to clarify that, that what we are looking at is an unlimited size for the accessory building there is an opportunity for USR and that abutting landowners and the HOA need to be notified before a building permit is issued for an accessory building? That is correct, Commissioner. So as the regulations sit right now, which is being proposed to you, there are no hard limitations on square footage limitations for a class two home occupation permit within an accessory building. Thank you. Further questions or comments for staff? So question for staff, if, I mean, obviously there's, there's no uh, hard uh, square footage limitation for the class two home occupation, but are there any other controls? I mean, this is pertaining to rural residential uh, properties. 
I mean, are there any other controls in place in terms of the size of an accessory structure that could be allowed? Yes, sir, Commissioner. So the county does not actively regulate the square footage of other accessory structures um, for the rural residential, large rural residential, and A1 zone districts. Um, but numerous factors uh, influence the size of structures that may be built. So this includes easements or right of way encumbering the property, uh, flood plains, topography, geology, uh, drainage requirements, lot size, setback, uh, private covenants, location of water wells. Uh, the list is quite long, so. I mean, do we see a most common um, um, out structure actually built on a rural residential property? Is there one more common than another? Uh, typically, Commissioner, it's a detached garage, and we do limit those, and that limit is 3,000 square foot, uh, depending on acreage. So if it, the acreage is one acre or larger, it's 3,000 square feet. If it's less than an acre, it's 1,000 square feet for a detached garage. Okay, thank you. Commissioner, okay. standards for staff. Sure. Just want to clarify yep. um, the question that Commissioner Thomas asked was regarding the permit for um, the home occupation itself, not the accessory structure. So there is a requirement to get a permit for the accessory. I mean, the um, home occupation permit would be uh, the, the answer to the question that you asked earlier. Thank you, Dan. Um, so the reason I asked that is when we had our hearing two weeks ago, I thought we heard some conversation about requiring HOA approval before a building, an accessory building could be built to ensure that it did not violate HOA covenants for a subdivision. So do we currently have that in place? Um, under the current regulations and what's being proposed for you today does not include um, a requirement for all accessory structures to get Per, or to go through an HOA um, process. This would be only for a permit for a class two home occupation. So right now it would be possible for someone to build an accessory building of 10,000 square feet if they wanted to for their business and then they would have to apply for a, a class two business license. That is correct, Commissioner. If they do get that accessory structure permitted by the Douglas County Building Department, um, they would also, if they would like to do business out of that accessory structure, they would have to get a Class Two home occupation permit, and that's through our department. Hi, Steve Coster for staff. I'm gonna add a little bit more clarity on that. So um, a building permit for an accessory structure and a class two home occupation permit don't have to be associated with each other. So a person could have an accessory structure that's existed on their property for many years and then decide that they want to do a class two home occupation on the site and they could just use whatever exists on the site. So if, for example, they had been able to build a 2000 square foot garage and they just wanna use that, they can make their application to use that particular structure and comply with the regulations. And, and same with a, a 10,000 square foot barn. Um, they could uh, make an application to use it in accordance with our class two home occupation uh, permit requirements. And, and nothing changes from the way our regulations are written today to what is in the regulations that are proposed in relation to that. So. Um, so we don't, and, and for any of those structures, we don't give HOAs like an approval authority over a building permit. So um, HOAs um, get notification uh, as a courtesy from our building department when uh, there are permits under review to let them know that something's happening. That gives that HOA an opportunity to reach out to the property owner if there is a concern and say, um, basically, hey, there are covenants that you also need to make sure you're complying with. It sounds like you wanna build a building that doesn't comply with our covenants. Let's work that out. Um, so we, but we don't, we're not party to those covenants, so we can't enforce them um, because we, we don't have a role in that contract. Um, so that's how that works. Um, more or less, um, and so I hope that kind of helps with that, that 
Um, there aren't any cases where we would uh, require an HOA approval before somebody could uh, build their accessory structure, regardless of whether or not that was a class for a class two home occupation or any other purpose, agriculture or something like that. Um, but we did mirror the idea of notifying the HOA so they're aware of something going on that currently happens with building permits with this latest version so that um, the applicant notices that HOA um, prior to even submitting their application. They need to um, provide that certification that they provided the notice um, prior to or c concurrent with making their application and, and it would be necessary for a complete application. So the last part of your conversation, Steve, thank you for this, is about the home occupation. It's not Correct. the building permit. Correct. Okay, thank you. Well, and thank you for that clarification. And, and let me be clear, I don't wanna go down a non sequitur here. I mean, without a doubt, under 230501, you make it very clear under class two home occupations that um, such use may be conducted within the dwelling provided that the total area for such purpose shall not exceed 50%. And in the class two, you say the permission granted or implied by class two home occupation permits shall not be construed as an exemption from any applicable covenants, conditions, restrictions, architectural standards or other private agreements and obligations. So true, as the county, we're not gonna enforce HOA covenants, but uh, without doubt, an HOA can have covenants that are more restrictive that they would then be able to enforce. Absolutely, okay. absolutely, and we wanna help them find out about these things. Right, so, so nothing in these changes today would prevent an HOA from having more restrictive covenants. Definitely not. Okay, and I just wanna to clarify too, I know we had some question after a, about a 10 hour hearing last time. Uh, you all have done a wonderful job with this process, so thank you for that. But CJ, what I heard you say was that even these accessory structures, when, we, when you use the word unlimited, it doesn't mean unfettered. Uh, they're still subject to counting zone, zoning regulations, correct? That is correct, Commissioner. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, any other questions or comments for staff? I don't think I have any other questions at this time. Okay, so with that, um, I would like to open it up for any citizen comment, and I do have uh, a page one for the public hearing item 3B where citizens have signed up. I'll go through this list um, in order that people signed up, but if you didn't sign up, you're still welcome to uh, testify today either in person or online, so I'll open it up after we get through this list. Uh, so let's start first with uh, Ms. Tammy Denhart. Hi, Ms. Denhart. I'm representing Bernie Tree HOA. Okay, so let's put six minutes on the clock, please. Um, my name is Tammy Denhart. Um, I'm Vice President of Bernie Tree Ranch HOA. I live at 8177 Bernie Tree Trail in Franktown. Um, thank you for your, my, your, my opportunity for to talk to you guys. <laughs> um, the two conditions that you have up there are not enforceable. They're only allowed to use 1,500 feet or half of what they're allowed to, to have for that building. Who exactly is gonna enforce that, particularly when it's inside of the building? A notification to an HOA and or residents with no approval means absolutely nothing. Doesn't mean anything. This commission should be speaking for everyone and not just one individual. What I want to know is why are we even entertaining the idea of allowing this when it goes against everything that people move out of the city for? Does anyone really want to come home to look at a large commercial building at the least plus, business, plus the business end of comings and goings? All this for the convenience of one neighbor while everyone else just has to live with it because zoning says so. Most people do not want to live where there is no separation between home and work. Allowing someone to build a building the size of a house or larger as being proposed takes away the idea of coming home to your own little sanctuary um, harder to achieve. The criteria presented to approve and keep this zoning supposedly in check are vague and ambiguous. The criteria are set up the same way development projects are screened. It's left up to the county to interpret whether they meet the criteria or not. When money or other is involved, it will get approved, whether it meets the criteria or not. 
The county historically does not have a good track record of enforcing zoning issues, and in most cases, nothing is done when they are reported. This is left up to the HOAs and residents to try and correct the zoning issues that, has, that the county has created. If someone truly had the need or want to be able to work from home or needed the capacity of a building that surpasses what the size of a barn or garage would be in most neighborhoods, then more suitable accommodations should be looked at that can accommodate what you are wanting to achieve rather than pushing the change of zoning so you can do what you want and desire despite everything and everything around you. There are neighborhoods, these are neighborhoods, and for the most part, neighbors try to be neighborly and accommodating with each other. But when one chooses to change something that affects the rest of the neighborhood and does so because the county says so, you are creating a free-for-all that OHOAs, HOAs and residents cannot even begin to handle. It doesn't matter how long a request or project has been worked on, a few months, a year, two years. Doing it right is what counts. It can't be put in place in all fairness to everyone involved, and I believe that the democratic way, the way we do things is the majority rule. What does the majority want or willing to compromise to? Then you'll have your answer of what you should do. If you don't have any questions, thank you for your time. Ms. Denhart, thank you for your comments today. So I have a uh, Kitty Mahagi. Magagi. Magagi, welcome. It's Japanese. I know I love the Irish. <laughs> I know you all are thrilled to see me again. Thank you for the opportunity. I have been told by citizens the round number of lots of lot owners across the county affected by the zoning is 5,000. I need to rely on planning to correct that if that's wrong. In the poll the county took, 79.66% of the respondents said they did not want a business building in rural residential. It is, if this percent is considered representative, then just shy of 4,000 or 80% of the 5,000 lot owners who are not here being represented would be expected to agree with the no business in RR resolution or question on the zoning. We might want to dismiss this example, but what percent of the total number of registered Douglas County voters showed up to vote in the 2020 election? And what percent of those ballots did it take to win? It, it, has, it, has become, it is and has become acceptable in our country that less than the majority is needed to vote an elected official who represents all of us into office. Why would not the poll described above be taken the same way? Webster defines zoning as the classification of land according to restrictions placed on its use and development. I would add also placed to the benefit of the existing as well as the new land owners. Like good fences, good zoning leads to good neighbors. A business building in RR with a square foot restrict with no square foot restriction is not good zoning and not in keeping with the poll conducted by the county um, partially described above or the citizens email received by Douglas County. The first half of the process saw the debate between an existing approved 1500 square foot accessory building permitted for business or a proposed doubling of the square footage to 3,000. About two months ago, a USR option was added to the 1,500 and we believed all parties were satisfied, at least as far as public statements were concerned. There seems little if no opposition to parking a trailer inside a structure, attached or detached, or working at as well as from home. Then halfway through the process, the wording changed to 3,000 or unlimited square feet, and the commissioners who have more control over the wording and the zoning than I do started complaining that the process was taking too long. It was taking too long because the new unlimited side building was introduced. We support all of the proposed changes to class two zoning if the square footage remains at 1,500 with the USR as now written. One of the problems is that rural residential, large rural residential and A1 are being lumped together and those are parcels of very vastly different sizes. No one's ever brought up why not just use a percentage according to the size of the parcel or the size of the buildings already existed. We reject the proposal that has no square foot limit as listed in the zoning is not serving the interests of the majority of the citizens of Dublin County. But if I am wrong, then change the zoning to meet the newly identified need at that time. 
We reluctantly support the 3,000 square foot choice because we feel like it was sprung us in the middle of the process. Respectfully submitted. Thank you, Ms. McGuggy. Appreciate your comments. We have a Joe Vecchio. Thank you, commissioners, and good day. I'd like to read a short. And ma'am, if you want to just state your name and where you're oh, from. I'm for sorry, the record. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Jill Vecchio, MacArthur Ranch, 990 Finn Avenue, Lone Tree slash Littleton, however you want to do it, 80124. According to the Constitution, uh, sorry, according to the Constitution, people are allowed on, through their unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. I would put to you that it's well recognized that the Homeowners Association and Civic Associations are the lowest form of governance by the people. I would implore that the county commissioners draft zoning regulation that includes a provision that requires approval of the homeowners association, civic association, or a certain percentage of surrounding affected neighbors prior to even considering a class two home occupancy permit. That's not, that's not, it could save the county money and time just by putting in this provision. We're not asking, I'm not, I'm not, this, this proposal is not asking the county to enforce homeowners association provisions and, and covenants. All it's saying is rather than just notifying the homeowners association, allow the homeowners association to, to stand up and say, no, this violates our covenants and we're not approving this permit prior to the county even wasting any time on the permit application. Therefore, it would save the county money, it would save the homeowners association money, it saves both parties a great deal of headaches and time and staffing issues that none of us can afford. This could solve the, uh, not the entire problem, but it could solve a great deal of the problem right there. I've listened to all the testimony on the videos, and I can tell you that this is an over, over and over and over the concerns that I heard from homeowners, homeowners associations, from the, the residents, the 5,000, among the 5,000 residents who actually testified, this was a recurring theme, that violation of the homeowners association covenants should be taken more seriously and given more credibility and respect. Thank you for your time. That's what I offer. And I would prefer the 1500. Um, I think you've done a really nice job at renovating the zoning requirements. Otherwise, certainly unlimited. I, I don't agree with, but if the Homeowners Association gives approval for something, then I, I think we can relax a little bit on some of the other issues. Again, I would prefer the 1500. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vecchio. Um, we do have a Lawrence Glessner. Lawrence Lesner, 1041 MacArthur Drive. We've had repeated revisions of the proposed amendments with each revision then expanding those limits. I'm curious as to why we're relaxing the limits when we've already seen the majority of responding residents don't want any relaxation at all. It, it seems to me that we've gone from 1,500 to 3,000 to unlimited. We're going the wrong direction, given the preponderance of the testimony of the preference of the residents. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Glessner. So we have a Tad Lyle. My name is Tad Lyle, and my address is 816 Quarry Road, Littleton. Uh, I would just like to go on the record and say that I'm in support of the comments made by Kitty Magaki and Jill Vecchio. And I would also just say, um, just so surprised that we're even to this point, given that our government is supposed to be 
representing the majority of its citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lyle. Uh, we've got a Brinka McLaughlin. Hello again. Hi. My name is Bronca McLaughlin, and unfortunately for you, I'm from MacArthur Ranch. Over the course of many months, you have heard from us in MacArthur Ranch and from our neighbors in Surrey Ridge. I have struggled to understand why no value has been given or placed on the opinions of the majority of the citizens in these rural communities. From your own poll, which is still viable today, it is 75% against this rezoning to the written letters that also reflect the opinion of the majority not wanting this rezoning. And here you go into unlimited now. We are passionate about our rural residential properties and are committed to protecting our rural environment and our lifestyle. Opening these to communities to become more of a business environment is inexcusable. In addition, you have passed responsibility to the state concerning the impact of this rezoning, not only on our aquifers, but also on the groundwater. I'm passionate about water. That is part of my business. This rezoning is 180 degrees from what has been in place for many years. Why not go 90 degrees and see how effective that rezoning is? And if it works, then rezone can continue processing from there. You have an opportunity to look to the future and keep some semblance of rural northern Douglas County still rural. I still support staying with 1,500 square feet accessory building, but including allowing storage of all business vehicles inside this building. I would like to say it would be great if we could end it today, but it will continue if you do this unlimited building size. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McLaughlin. I have a Casey Groves. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Commissioners. My name is Casey Groves. I live in Surrey Ridge Estates. Uh, we live on about six acres. Our footprint at our house is about 2,500 square feet. When you put a building on a lot like ours that's unlimited in size, let's just say hypothetically 10,000 square feet, you're completely changing not just the character of our property, but of every property that has view of our property. And so that's one of the things that I think is really important for the commissioners to understand is that our properties are assets for many of us they might be the most valuable asset on our balance sheet. And when our asset is affected by the decision of a neighbor to do something like put a business on the property, uh, that can have an irreversible impact on the value of the asset. Um, there has been discussions about limiting the size of the accessory buildings. I think that makes complete sense giving people the right to go build unlimited accessory buildings is, is not reasonable given the statements of the commissioners at the last meeting that I attended where there was repeated discussion about giving people the right to do with their properties what they want to do, but subject to the rights and interests of their neighbors. I think that's really at the core of what we're talking about here. It's not. I don't think, at least from my perspective, it's not trying to squelch the, the ability of people to do an occupation at their home. I support that. It's don't do it in a way that ruins my experience and the value of my asset. So, you know, there's lots of different ways to limit structure size. You could do it as a percentage of your lot size. You could do it as some kind of percentage of the existing footprint of the, of the structure, the home. Um, but I'm supportive of 3,000. On these lots that are four and a half acres, I think 3,000 is a reasonable limit, um, but there ought to be some limit. And, and no limit at all is a recipe for disaster because <laughs> you know, if, if someone builds a 10,000 square foot accessory building right next to my, my view, 
my entire asset and my experience has been destroyed. So I support what the commission has done in many respects. I, I also support the notice provisions that have been included in the latest draft. I think that there needs to be very serious consideration given to a size limitation on the size of the accessory buildings. That's, I think that's good policy for the county. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Groves. So that's everyone that has signed up on the list, but that doesn't mean you can't testify today if you didn't sign up. So if there's anybody in the room that would still like to make a comment, uh, now is your time. Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Jolene Versteg. Um, I am uh, recently purchased a house in the last couple of years at 10637 Niagara Street. That is in MacArthur Ranch. Um, I would like to read for you um, the language in, co in the code, section 501, which gives the whole idea of why we have what we have in our, in our zoning, and this, in particular these rural areas. To provide areas for large lot residential home sites on land that has minimal farming or ranching value that create country living in a rural atmosphere while preserving the vegetation, significant geological features, wildlife habitat corridors, views and privacy, and provide appropriate transition from urban development to agricultural areas. Expansion of urban development into rural areas is a matter of public concern because of the potential of unnecessary increases in service costs, conflicts between agricultural and urban activities, and the loss of open space and the natural landscape. I think that sums up why these comments are so important. The kind of building we have, the size of building, the, in, when you think of the footprint of being unlimited, on top of that, 45 feet high, that's three stories, completely changes the landscape, not only for us neighbors, but for the surrounding areas that enjoy the open space feel of Douglas County. It's why I moved to Douglas County. I love Douglas County. I would like to, to stay that way. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Further comments? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Postlata, and I live in Surrey Ridge, an unincorporated HOA community. I'm also a member of the community's architectural review committee, and my husband is on the HOA. Uh, we also moved here a few years ago, and we moved here because of the rural residential feel, as many of our neighbors and neighboring communities have said today. We intentionally did not move into an area that had commercial uses. I'm a business owner. I fully support business use. I do not support an unlimited use in our community. We have a lot that is abutted by a horse easement. We have a barn in the back of our house. One of our neighbors built something that was permitted by the county that did not go through the HOA or the committee before I moved into the community. And because of the way the county operates, that was permitted to go up. And the only thing that was basically left to the HOA was to either engage in litigation or leave it alone. And that's kind of where the proposed language is, is placing all of us, as some folks have said. By allowing an unlimited use, if you don't put some guidelines around this language that requires either owner sign off or HOA sign off in order to apply for the permit to have that in hand, you're not only pushing the potential for conflict and litigation to your constituents, but it will also create conflict at the county level. Our community is unincorporated. We do not have a city overlay that provides support for infrastructure, for example. Um, for a bit of context, I'm a real estate attorney. I also led a federal agency's real estate practice for a very long time. And in that role, we did a lot of planning and utilization estimates for infrastructure, population, density, demand. We would never put a hospital in a residential area. We would never put a commercial district or allow an unlimited commercial use that could greatly increase the density and the usage of that neighborhood without ensuring that there were resources to apply to the infrastructure. And these are our zoning communities that are under 30 acres, the four acre, five acres, four and a half acres and up. We have roads that need paving. We have electrical grids that were put up for single family homes in a rural residential area. We have well systems and septic systems that are not configured to handle unlimited size secondary structures. 
if even half of the folks that had the opportunity to build decide to do it under the zoning, we are opening a Pandora's box and it feels arbitrary. We do not have the resources or the plan. We have not been provided with data that shows how many folks would literally be impacted both in utilization and by, by right, by homeowner value. So with that, um, I just wanted to also mention, I know my time is running out, that allowing, allowing an unlimited size option is a deal breaker for our community. Many of my friends, I'm on a text string with at least 10 other folks in my neighborhood that couldn't be here because this is also school pickup right now. So the time of day really doesn't work. Folks can't call into a WebEx while they're in car line waiting for their kids. They're very upset about this and they feel like they don't have the opportunity to provide that feedback aside from having designated folks come speak. I hope some are on WebEx today and thank you for listening. Thank you, ma'am. Any additional comments from the gallery today? Yes, sir. Thank you for your time today. My name is Sean Flanagan. I live at 308 Wanway, Castle Rock, Colorado. Um, in addition to Jackie's comments, I would just like to say, I am actually a second generation homeowner in Surrey Ridge. Um, I actually specifically left the city of Chicago during the COVID pandemic to get away from business and commercial uses and get out to the countryside. Um, allowing this type of use in our communities is just unacceptable and I do not support this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Yes, sir. I'm Lance Baller. Um, we have a property at 1198 Finn Avenue. Um, I don't get this. I've watched it as it's gone through. Somebody with a lot of cloud is pushing this through. It's a bad idea. We fight it all the time with businesses trying to go in, having unlimited buildings. We live on 15 acres. We're not part of an HOA. I can build a big building. and. Um, this is a bad idea. It needs to be limited to 15 acres. I'm a business owner. I have other businesses in the county. Why you want to ruin your tax revenue from existing businesses that are renting commercial spots, I don't understand it. Um, this just needs to be reevaluated. Re this is just a stupid idea. Thank you, sir. Any further comment from the gallery? Yes, sir. Hi, my name's Jim Badimley. I live on Christie Ridge Road, and I just want to support everything that's been said by everyone before me. Just a bad idea. You, you, this is just going to ruin, has the potential to ruin why we all live where we live. I don't know how many of you do, but this is a bad idea. So that's, that's my comment. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm Kim Avery and I live in Parker. I want the same opportunity to get a home occupation permit as someone who has an on-site business. MacArthur Ranch would have no problem with my husband or any other contractor going into their neighborhood to build a fence or a plumber going to fix a broken pipe. But they don't think we should be able to live there and park our work equipment on our private property in our accessory structure. It seems to me, did you guys know that our accessory structure looks exactly Ma'am, I'm going to ask that you restrict your barn? comments to the board, please. Okay, so going back. It seems to me they are afraid a fire will start or their horse will get run over only if I live there and live and leave the neighborhood to work or versus having someone come into their neighborhood to work. Sounds pretty elitist to me. They need an HOA to manage their specific desires, but not the entire county. I would rather have a good positive conversation with my neighbor about a situation than involve the government in my life. This issue is about property rights. Cont contractors should have the same right as a manufacturer. We All we want to do is be able to pull our trailer off our property and my husband wants to go to work. He comes home at night. We're not having all kinds of people coming in and out. Use our building that looks like the neighbor's horse barn. I live within earshot of five small businesses. I never hear the neighbors because we're all there because we love the country. We're not making messes everywhere. 
you wouldn't even know that we have a, um, a business because pretty much we hide it because we like to have a pretty nice place. It's, um, in fact, you know, we have 80 trees and no one's told us where we have to park those trees or plant those trees. It's beautiful. How does my husband storing his equipment in an accessory building affect your life? And this business of great big, huge, giant buildings, those buildings cost a lot of money. And all these um, small business owners, we are not rich. We just want to park our stuff inside an accessory building. And I don't understand this business that you guys keep talking about because who's using all the water? We're not using the water. I don't know any small business that uses a ton of water. In fact, no water. We go to your property to build your fence and we're using your water when we build that fence. Barely any. So that's it. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, further comments? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Ned Avery, and uh, I've lived in D Douglas County for the last 30 years, and I've owned three different businesses in that time, employing over 40 different people. Um, if you were to look at my property, um, you would never know that I own a business. My property is pristine. We have a lot of pride in our property from our business side and our um, home side, and I think what it comes down to is people taking care of their property. We have people that live down the street from us that have bathtubs in their front yard. They have toilets in their front yard, cars up on blocks. They don't own businesses. My property doesn't look like that. Um, I'm for this new amendment. Um, what I don't understand is the last time we were here for eight hours, which was brutal, and we wanted, you guys wanted to do the 3,000 square foot that didn't go through. I was fine with that at that time. I already have a building. I don't need another building. Um, the other thing is I don't think I should have to ask permission from my neighbors to where I'm going to put that building on the property that I pay taxes on. So um, those are just my thoughts and I'm hoping we can get this settled tonight and, and get this done for people that have been here for a whole year. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Additional comments? Yes, sir. My name is Rick. I'm from Grandview Estates. Um, Grandview Estates gives the feel of a bit of a mixed use. Uh, there are quite a few businesses in it and so forth. There are horse properties, uh, less horse properties now. They've dealt with the uh, grandfathering for horse properties. Someone mentioned where we put trees. Uh, my neighbor put trees all across where I lost my mountain view. Um, probably the same type of thing they're considering with their buildings. Uh, certainly, I see a reason for larger buildings for some type of businesses. It is not easy to find a place to run a business in Douglas County or in Denver or anywhere. There are some types of business that even in our commercial facilities, they don't want that type of business or the trash that that business generates on their property. Um, there is absolutely a reason to build divisions that have mixed use and provide that in the zoning regulations. So that may be an option here that we create an entirely new zoning type format for new communities coming into the area. Um, in my community, I have a neighbor who has a horse property and she is getting a lot of flack for having horses, which that has been grandfathered in in Grandview Estates. And I find we're getting much more of this complaint about what neighbors can do with their property. And that also is something many of us moved into Douglas County for, is that freedom to do with our properties what we would like to do with them. So I'm in favor of your amendment. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Ben Henry, Parker, Colorado. Um, I think that the vast majority of the people we're talking about who are for these changes probably aren't, first of all, going to build yet another building. Um, the majority of the people I know around me who are doing business already have what they need and are doing stuff peacefully, quietly, much like the Averys were speaking about. And um, I don't think the sky is totally falling on that. Uh, I think that the, 
this this idea again of expensive building is is tremendous to build to begin with, and I don't think most people want to create that kind of blight, even as a small business owner. So, I think that's one thing where most of these people are just already doing things, and they're just finding out that oh, you're not even allowed to do any of this kind of stuff, and they're just incognito as it is. And so I think the vast majority, we just we need to make the changes simply so that it makes it more pro-business, which is what Douglas County has generally been. Also, this idea of the majority of the people in Douglas County being against it, I think is kind of a false narrative because we have 373,000 people residing here. We have two specific neighborhoods with a very vocal thing going that are very against it. And that does not represent the whole county. Somebody brought up that some of their people are unable to come because they're picking up kids. I would say a lot of the business owners that I spoke to over the last few weeks, they aren't coming because they're out working and they're trying to keep their business going. So I think that we could we could have the same conversation on both sides that we're, we're underrepresented because of the time of day as well. And yet we do have a lot of people that we've spoken to who are very much for the changes and would like to see those changes made so that they could be totally legal. And they've always felt that they were anyway because they thought that they owned land for the reason that they could do what they wanted to with their land within reason. And I think most people are reasonable and they're not going to try to blight things and hate on their neighbors. So anyway, I'm for the changes. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Henry. Further questions or comments from the uh, gallery today? Any other citizen comment? Yes, ma'am. Hello again. Hi, Ms. Biggs. Allison Biggs, um, Surrey Real Estates, Unincorporated Douglas County, excuse me. <clears throat> It bothers me to hear that there are people who live on property that have no idea how their property was owned when they bought it. So they're operating things like the gentleman just spoke to with no idea that they were in violation of the zoning for their property or the covenants that fit it. I don't know why anybody would buy property without knowing those kinds of things and being willing to adhere to them. It just goes against my grain. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that we really do need to have people look at the covenants before a permit is applied for. As one of the prior speakers said, it would save a whole lot of time, effort, and money on both the part of the applicant and the county and its staff. If you look at something and if the county really means that this is not going to bother the covenants of a, of a neighborhood, then look at those first, and if it doesn't work, then why should the applicant submit something that is in violation of the covenants for the area they're in? We've been accused of not wanting people to be able to store equipment on their property. That has not ever been said by any of us who oppose the whole idea of the unlimited size of the buildings. I don't care if somebody parks a trailer or a truck in their, in their garage or in their outbuilding, but I don't want the county to sanction outbuildings of unlimited size. That does not seem to make sense to me. The county has said it's pro-business, but it also needs to be pro the people who live here and the people who came here for the reason that the rural residential zoning stood for. And I hope you don't do this to us by making it unlimited. Thank you, Ms. Biggs. Further comments? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Stephanie Bryant from Surrey Ridge Estates, and I've got some photos for you. You can approach if you want to provide those to council. He'll label those as an exhibit. Uh, give them to me, please. I'll label them. Thanks. Thanks. I'm commissioners, I'm reminding you that the proposed Home Occupation 2 permit is for homes and neighborhoods and feel that a particularly important fact keeps getting lost. I'm also reminding you 80% of Douglas County citizens, per your survey, are actually against this 
proposed change. I keep feeling that we're not being heard. I respectfully ask you to limit building size of totally of bleh, can't talk. I respectfully ask you to limit building size of total accessory buildings to 1,500 square feet. I could live with 3,000. The photos I passed to Mr. Ingalls are of my front pasture and my neighbors. So not just my property, but also my neighbors. Both of these pastures would accommodate a huge building. There's no leach fields. My leach field is in the back of my property. So is my neighbors. There's no easements, and there's a 50-foot setback. So I could put, if I wanted to, a huge building in my front pasture. That's very apparent from those photographs. If you do something like this, it affects many, many properties in Douglas County. There's 5,000 of them. The guardrails from planning and zoning really are inadequate, and to allow anything unrestricted affects the way our rural neighborhoods look and feel. Building a huge building and operating a business that affects neighbors is really not being a good neighbor. It is not being what rural Douglas County is known for. Please do not allow this. I'm reiterating a request to approve in the zoning resolution the adjacent homeowner's approval or an HOA of applicable prior to submitting an application. As other people have said here, this would save time and money, it would prevent a lot of problems. This allows, as I've said before, neighbors the chance to have an open, clear communication and dialogue. And I think that's what, we, what you want. Um, somebody mentioned water, I'll just say, commercial wells per the Division of Water Resources are required at the state level for business use. And water is a very, um, very touchy subject right now. Commissioner Layden, I've heard you said before that Douglas County is open for business, but not at the expense of neighbors. And I ask you to honor that and limit this to a smaller building footprint and HOA approval. And thank you for your time. It's much appreciated. Thank you. And, and commissioners, there was two photos submitted. I labeled them exhibits two and exhibit three. If I could ask at least one of you to preserve your copies for the record, we only had three copies of each, so I have not submitted one for the record yet. Okay, I'll preserve my copy, and I also have the sign-in list I'll give to our clerk and recorder. Any additional comment from citizens today? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Jim Stout. I'm from Parker. I'm definitely for the unlimited. Uh, you know, I'm a, my grandkids are sixth-generation Coloradans. From what I'm hearing tonight, this afternoon, majority of people are from out of state, from the city, whatever. And they want to keep changing things. And I've spoke to a lot of people that are from Colorado, and they're not going to put up with this being limited to stuff. You know, they're, the natives are restless. And I can tell you, you can, if you guys don't make a decision today, I beg you to drive around and look around all the businesses that are on people's properties. Almost all of them are clean. You know, they look just like a city house. They're pristine, and people are proud of their business. And they're the people you call if you're supporting local business. So I beg you to, uh, you know, go with the unlimited. See what happens. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Additional comments? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, good afternoon. My name is Jean Griswold and I live in Surrey Ridge Estates. My husband and I bought our land in 1980. We built our home in 1985. We bought there because of the covenants, because we were gonna be protected and have a place that we could live and enjoy our life and have other people enjoy coming to our properties, our kids and our grandkids. I've been in Colorado all my life. I, it amazes me how this could have gone so far as far as trying to decide on what is allowable. The covenants were there for a reason. And we need to either 
look at them and modify them if we need to, if the property owners feel that that's necessary. But to have somebody come and get a permit knowing or being ignorant about the covenants is ridiculous because the HOAs have no authority once that permit has been granted. And it puts neighbors against neighbors. We have an awesome community, but we don't have people that are coming in and building huge structures in our neighborhood. It's not meant for commercial. There are some businesses that are meant to run from home, which I do, but there are other businesses that should never be run from home. We have never said that we are against people parking their vehicles in a barn or in a detached garage, an accelerated business. We're not against that. We're not against people that run their business respectively, respectfully, but we are against people coming in and just doing whatever they want because they think they can without regard to anybody else in that community. I hope that you guys really evaluate what is going on here right now. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Additional comments? Yes, sir. Uh, Troy Bacon, Parker, Colorado. Um, so, news flash, businesses are allowed today in Douglas County. Uh, I don't know if you guys realize that, but they are permitted and allowed. Um, what we're asking here is for uh, private property rights to be respected. Um, that's what's at stake here, private property rights. Let us exercise our rights, um, letting us park our equipment in our own building. Um, and I keep hearing, you know, it's the same neighborhood, MacArthur Ranch, Surrey Ridge. MacArthur Ranch, Surrey Ridge. Well, you know, I've done work in these neighborhoods and, and uh, they're wealthy enough to, to uh, afford the HOA fees that would um, accommodate them to put limits on building size, structures, buildings, you know, uh, they're, they can, they're plenty capable of doing that. Um, and I also keep hearing about building size, there's like there's gonna be these ginormous buildings and that's also not true because they are limited to 3,000 square feet for a garage and there are several criteria uh, for uh, buildings that are larger such as barns and horse arenas, things like that. Um, so I would ask you to approve this amendment. Um, your own planning committee has given you a six to zero approval for this to respect our property rights and let us do what we want to do. Um, and realize, you know, that Douglas County is 800 square miles and there are a lot of businesses here that would be affected by this and you guys want businesses to come in. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bacon. Further citizen comment? Yes, ma'am. Please, sure. Thank you for your attention. I'm Judith McBride and I live in Surrey Ridge Estates. I've been here for 28 years. I'll never leave because I absolutely love it. Much of what I've written ahead of time was already addressed, so I'll just skip down and say that allowing for commercial buildings would be problematic because it would increase traffic, would affect that wildlife, would be an eyesore for all concerned. It would increase litigation in as much as our covenants say no commercial buildings, and that would force us into a situation where we would have to litigate against our neighbors. Aesthetics matter, how something looks mat matters. It's just basic common sense. We live in, live in a community where just about everyone values beauty. 
and I don't think it's a stretch to say that this beauty is defined by estates that have grass and flowers, areas where you can look out and you see absolutely nothing, horses that grace many properties. Last Saturday, I walked and I counted 26 bike riders who were competing for an event, and they all said, what a great place to live, wish we could live here too. Extra buildings work against this rural, delightful community, and I'm respectively saying that there's no one who could be more vehemently against this rule. Thank you, Ms. McBride. Any other citizen comment? Yes, ma'am. I'm Christine Gabreski, and I was a resident of Surrey Ridge Estates for 29 years and have moved to Oak Hills, which is another five acre right south of Surrey Ridge. And I agree with everybody who has stood up as far as not changing the zoning. Uh, follow the HOA covenants and be good neighbors to your neighbors. Thank you, ma'am. Further citizen comment? Yes, sir. Neil McLaughlin, MacArthur Ranch. I don't think anybody who is, I want to say, against this proposal has said anything today about a 1,500 square foot building allowing people to park their equipment in there. We're not against that at all. The unlimited thing is the thing that's really bothering people. And I think also the, the idea of either either neighbors or HOAs, being in the loop is critical. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Any other, yes, sir. And let me just say, if you do have additional citizen comment, why don't you form a line in the middle and we'll just uh, have you come up in order. If there's any other individuals that have citizen comment in the room, just please come up to, uh, near the podium, please. Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Bruce Bryant. I'm uh, currently a resident of Surrey Ridge Estates. I've been out there since 95. Before that, I grew up in Greenwood Village, and it was dirt roads and uh, tiny, uh, um, you know, five acre parcels. And then uh, the tech center came in and it changed it overnight. It went, went crazy property values. It changed the whole flavor of everything. So, uh, you know, I'll just stick with what's happening right now, not future trip as, as people say, but um, I moved into Surrey Ridge and accepted our covenants, which said no steel buildings, no metal fencing. And uh, I did get called out one time. I had, uh, I think up to five trailers parked on my property. Horse trailer, couple of boats, landscape trailer, motorcycle trailer, and I had to look at my part in that, and that was yeah, it was uh, a little bit over the top. So I paired. Actually, a neighbor took care of the horse trailer by totaling that, so that got rid of that. Started <laughs> slimming things down and uh, and try to be uh, you know careful and, and live by the covenants that are out there and respect them. So today I'm here to just say I'm in favor of what. Uh, in particular, uh, Casey Groves has shared, and uh, uh, my wife, Stephanie, and others. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, it got awkward standing in the middle, so we sat That's down. That's fine. Okay. My name's Jenna Bacon, I live in Parker. And I've heard many times that you work for us, but in this case, you are the boss, and I'm talking to you, commissioners. You get to decide if we get to keep our jobs. If you vote no on this and we can't find or afford off-site storage, then we lose our jobs. When I say we, I mean everyone who needs to work from home and utilize their accessory structure on their own private property. After extensive public discussions and meetings, some of the opposed are beginning to understand that their health, safety, and welfare are not going to be affected by the proposed amendments. Others are still stuck on information that has nothing to do with Class II home occupations. Others understand but want the county regs to be the same as their HOA regs so that the county will be responsible for enforcement of HOA rules. 
Perhaps the federal government could lend our county some of their new IRS agents. They could be assigned to paint color patrol, patrol to ensure everyone's garbage cans are tucked neatly out of sight by 6 p.m., and to make sure everyone has a specified number of trees and shrubs as required by the HOA. This is not the county's role. If the regulations remain the same tomorrow as they are today, then we have a choice. We can continue enduring the hardship of not being allowed to utilize our garage on our own private properties, or we can sell our home and move out of Douglas County. And actually, I guess that would make you our boss and our landlord. I hope you will vote yes on this amendment. Thank you, Ms. Bacon. Uh, Scott Zimmerman and Parker. There's no such thing as a commercial building on a residential site. I mean, all the HOAs say that you have to make it appealing to your property, uh, matching the color or scheme of your house. They all have to be approved by somebody, you guys or the HOA and or both. Um, I mean, this is for contractors and everything. I mean, you can't afford to build a huge building today. I mean, the prices of everything are through the roof. So this 10,000 square foot steel building is astronomical. But I mean, there are some riding arenas that are good size. They're not 10,000 square feet, but they're good size. And the riding arenas that are that size are for commercial business. They're either teaching riding lessons um, or boarding horses there. It's still a commercial business for those riding arenas. But I hope you guys approve our amendment for working from home so we can use our buildings that we were permitted to build and store our stuff and keep our neighborhoods nice and clean. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. Further citizen comment. Yes, ma'am. My name is Nita Brott. I live um, on Surrey Drive. I am one of those evil people in Surrey Ridge Estates. But um, I don't have a whole lot to add. I might mention, uh, Jean, we beat you by one year. We bought our acreage in 78. But um, anyway, I, I'm, I'm very puzzled by this entire thing. I don't quite understand what's happening here in terms of unlimited sizes of buildings. The kind of businesses people are talking about, I don't understand why they need a building larger than 1,500 square feet. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. And the, most of our lots of four and a half, five and a half acres could accommodate much larger buildings. And just because somebody, because it's expensive to build a building this size, doesn't mean that nobody's going to apply to do that. Um, I know that some of us wish we lived on the wild frontier and we could do whatever the heck we wanted to with our land, but that doesn't way it work, isn't the way it works in communities. You have to keep your, you have to be considerate of your neighbors and I don't understand why you would buy into a community if you did and with the intent of having a business if you didn't know that it was going to be allowed. We definitely, um, like was mentioned before, we bought into the community because there were guardrails. And it appears to me that this would just pretty much get rid of those guardrails. I, I actually, you know, my husband makes a little fun of me, but I actually have a home-based business. I have a pottery, pottery studio on my basement. But the idea of having a large structure and uh, holding classes and having some gas kilns and that kind of thing on my property is something that would never, uh, never happen. There are places and times for, for activities like that. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Further citizen comment? Okay, anybody else in the room? Okay, Troy, I'm gonna open it up for online comment. Do we have any citizen comment online? Yes, sir, thank you. I will first unmute Betsy Lyle. Betsy, you're unmuted, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just wanna tell you I am from MacArthur Ranch. I am a Colorado native, been in MacArthur Ranch for 29 years. And when we purchased in MacArthur Ranch, we did so because of the zoning. Um, rural residential, 
We love the urban or the rural feel. We have horses and we are not against at all um, home businesses. But, but I do think that it's a great idea to have the homeowners association approve them. And I think that would ensure that they are in line with the feel of the neighborhood, which most of the people who want to have home businesses that have spoken today have said, you know, their, their businesses are pristine, they fit in, and I believe them. But in order to ensure that that continues, I think it's important that we have uh, require a homeowners association sign off before an application can be made. Um, I think that protects the neighborhood. It uh, prevents neighbors being angry and pitted against other neighbors and having to, um, uh, you know, uh, begin legal action. And um, I would, I would just please, please listen to the people who have been here who purchased knowing what the zoning was and did so for that reason. Um, I am, if you, if you choose to approve accessory buildings, I please, please limit it to, I mean, I would say 1500, but at the worst 3000 square feet. Um, and I just thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Is there further citizen comment? Yes, sir. I have Amber Saunders. Amber, you're unmuted. Go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my call. I'm one of the parents that was not able to come in today. Um, I live in Surrey Ridge as well. There's a lot of uh, community representing us today. Love to see that. Um, there's a reason why there's a lot of folks from Surrey Ridge here. Uh, one of the reasons we moved here four years ago is because we wanted to escape the HOA environment after our little boy went through transplant cancer treatment. We really just did not love the look of lawns covered in chemicals and we just wanted to be able to live a better lifestyle. We have a small plot, but we're fortunate to look upon our neighbor's land and our neighbor's no kills and Surrey Ridge Estates and so on and so forth. Uh, everybody I know that lives here is very committed to land stewardship. Uh, they care about the wildlife here. They care about, you know, a fawn being stuck in the fence at night. Somebody with a 5,000 square foot building would care less if owls were being electrocuted on the, you know, uh, the electric lines out back. They wouldn't pester, um, Excel Energy to come out and put insulators on the lines. We're really, really passionate about the wildlife we have in this community and maintaining that and learning how to live with that. Um, and I think there's a huge misunderstanding about the purpose of our HOA. We, <laughs> it only exists, the, the HOA in Surrey Ridge only exists to maintain the horse trails, that's it. We do have an architectural control committee, but it actually, it, it works more as a courtesy. And like Jackie Lata uh, described earlier, if you listened, we don't have a lot of control when somebody breaks those rules. We don't have tons of money in the bank to go and, and you know, pay for litigation that we really shouldn't have to do in the first place. So, you know, we have an emotional investment here and I just think it's important to at least limit the size of the building. And that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Further citizen comment? Yes, sir. I have, uh, finally, it looks like I have Karen. Karen Hickman, you are unmuted. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Karen Hickman, unincorporated Douglas County, Grandview Estates. Some involved here today are a little confused as to staff's comment that only an unlimited square footage option is available today. There are two options in the agenda packet with resolutions ready for signature, one of which is 3,000 square feet, so perhaps staff can clarify. 
There is no need for unlimited square business footage for business use since there is an appeal process included in the amendment via use by special review for any business owner who needs more square footage or even more employees. This referral is not about property rights as all involved have the same rights. This referral from the start has been about improving a county resolution to allow more reasonable business use if a business owner even applies for a permit. Since 1995, the county has only received 32 applications for permit, many of which didn't qualify. While I don't like the terms opposers or supporters or residents of either side being called out by each other or by the commissioners, this referral has at times pitted both sides against each other. The sad part, all involved share common interests, including dependency on groundwater and concerns of overdevelopment, lack of high-speed broadband, and even wildfire mitigation issues similar to Boulder County in their rebuilding efforts. The county has always had in place various zoning resolutions and policies that benefit businesses, just like every other county, town, or municipality in the state. And this amendment has tried to incorporate changes for all involved. It is my hope that tomorrow morning, we can all wake up like Bill Murray did in the movie Groundhog Day and have this issue decided. I also want to thank staff and the BOCC for working with all affected property owners on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hickman. Do we have any further citizen comment? I have no further online comment. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So, Troy, it sounds like we do have some citizens that are trying to patch in and provide some comments. Do you have anybody on your end? I have. Th thank you, Commissioner. I have no other recent uh, folks joining, so I, I don't see any additional. Okay. Well, I'll just add that, you know, we did have a 10-hour hearing the other day, and the, one of the reasons that we did continue to today was to allow for exactly what we heard, which is additional citizen comment. I think we ha have heard quite a bit from folks in the room and online. Um, but just out of respect to those that might be in those carpool lines, I'm one of those dads that sometimes has to call in on WebEx from a carpool line, so I get it. Um, let's just give it a moment to see if there's anybody else. And if there's anyone in the room that really feels like they want to say something and didn't get a chance to, you, you still have an opportunity now as well. Yes, ma'am. Um, would it be possible to ask the moderator to open the comment function? Because they can't let them know that they're there. Because it's not working. And then use the raised hand feature. Okay, so if you understand the instructions, we'll just give it a few more moments for those to try to work with the technology. Commissioner, I am monitoring and I still have no additional uh, attendees. Okay, Troy, anybody else? No, sir. Okay. Well, with that, I will close citizen comment and bring it back to the board for further discussion and or a motion. So if I could just start and clarify um, what I heard one of the citizens say, there are two resolutions in the packet. Uh, one is for 3,000 and one is unlimited. Is that correct? Yes, Commissioner. So after, uh, as alluded to in my presentation, after the August 9th hearing, staff did present or uh, submit the 3,000 square foot limitation within my staff report to Section 23. Uh, after the August 15th uh, work session, we did submit an addendum to the staff report that has the language that, <clears throat> 
excuse me, uh, we alluded to in our presentation. So. Thank you. <laughs> Further discussion or comments from the board? You bet. If it does please the board, I do have a motion to approve a resolution adopting amendments to Douglas County Zoning Resolution Sections 3, Agriculture 1 District, 4, Large Rural Residential District, 5, res Rural Residential District, 21, Use by Special Review, and 23, Home Occupations, Project File DR2022-001. And I do wish to speak in favor of the motion. So before I, I second that motion, I would like to hear some discussion uh, from the board about what we've heard. And I'm happy to do that, but I'm not ready to second a motion yet. Okay, well then for the purposes of decorum, I will second that motion um, and open it up for discussion. So I'll go ahead and start unless you would like to, George. Uh, by all means, please. Okay. So we have been here and we've heard from 23 residents or 23 spoke against, eight spoke for. Uh, this has been going on for about a year, this conversation about allowing more commercial use in our residential areas. The county did a poll online and here's the printout that we were given and I didn't go through and count this. Staff told me that 70% of the people said they disagreed, strongly disagreed, with allowing more commercial use in residential areas of 4.5 acres or more. We've heard a lot of conversation about private property rights. And I, I think private property rights go two ways. When you buy a piece of property, you have property rights in it. And when you buy a piece of property, you have property rights in it to ensure that what you bought is what you are going to get. So it's the balance of people buying their property and how people use their property. Um, you know, I know people want to say, this is America, this is my property and I can do with it what I want. But you bought that property with zoning on it and the zoning tells you what you can and can't do with that property. Um, you know, I, I think we need to listen to the residents, the emails we have gotten, a majority of the emails, vast majority of the emails we have received are from people who are opposed to these changes. I am willing to allow 1,500 square foot accessory buildings for commercial use so people can park their equipment so their neighbors do have a pristine neighborhood, that there aren't vehicles stacked everywhere. Um, and I think that creates a balance for a small business to be operated out of a residence. We heard several people say, I would approve, I, I could support 1,500 square feet. We heard a lot of people say, I really believe the HOA needs to be involved in this decision, that before a class two home occupation permit is allowed, the HOA needs to approve that it is allowed by the HOA. So we aren't then requiring, the county's requiring something that the HOA does not allow. Uh, it seems like to me, we talk all the time about how Douglas County is great because of partnerships. We all work together with each other, so let's include the HOAs in that discussion. And so I would be in favor of 1,500 square feet for an accessory building with communication with neighbors in HOA. Thank you. Further discussion? Yes, sir. Well, I do, I do think we should listen to our residents. And over and over again with the folks who spoke against this amendment, I heard, and I counted three, and I know I missed a few, who said nobody here is opposed to anybody parking equipment in their barn. A couple of you said nobody's opposed to them parking equipment in their garage. And, and there's a couple of heads nodding right now. But colleagues, we're here today because we actually had a business shut down because 
our current version of this zoning amend of this zoning resolution actually doesn't allow that. I mean, that's that is why we're here. It's because we don't allow people to park their business equipment in their accessory buildings. And actually, I think it's important at this time to also say, we heard many people say, unlimited number of buildings. There was a number of you who said that, that you were opposed to this because, order, Chair, order. I will ask for order from the, the gallery, please. We heard that. We heard people say unlimited number of buildings. But colleagues, it is clearly stated here that only one accessory building would be allowed for business use. We've heard many people say on buildings of unlimited size. Many people have said that in opposition to this amendment. But we actually then heard our own staff say, actually there are other controls in other areas of the zoning resolution that do regulate what size buildings could be put on a rural residential property. It, it was the first point of clarification that was established. And so even though, well, and, well, and actually, it was actually uh, reiterated, this amendment is silent to actual building size. What this speaks to is business use within one accessory structure. And colleagues, I, I would ask you to please just take a look at the red lines as articulated and actually annotated in this amendment. We've heard, again, the, this, the concept of commercial buildings or business buildings. And yet, it's actually, again, articulated in this amendment that those would not be allowed. They are permitted buildings for residential use where the accessory use is for a business. Um, the, the comparison, nobody said this, don't, please don't, I'm not putting words in anybody's mouth, but I've always kind of felt like what you don't want is you don't want a neighbor moving in and putting a 3,000 square foot Starbucks in, in your neighborhood. Mrs. Bryant, you sent us pictures here. Yeah, we could stick a 3,000 square foot Starbucks on your piece of property on what you presented us, but that has never, ever been what this is about. This has always been about a residential property being able to operate a business. Right now, without amendment, a residential property in rural residential can operate a business. The big difference is, is it, is it a business actually running from that place where customers are coming and going? Two employees are allowed right now without this amendment. Two employees are allowed to come and go as needed to make deliveries, to, to pick up supplies, bring them back. What is not allowed is the ability of a business to operate from. I'm very familiar with Surrey Ridge. My first residence here in Douglas County was adjacent to Surrey Ridge. I'm very familiar with the property. Folks, I'm very familiar with the fact that you've watched the population boom around you in the time that many of you have been here. And I know that's a concern, that it's going to encroach into your neighborhood. This won't allow that. We heard from Mrs. Avery, and one of the things we heard from Mrs. Avery is something that I do believe is a little endemic to this conversation. You talk about the, con the growth and the commercial growth that you all have seen in your time here, since you've been here since you bought your land in the 70s and the 80s. A lot of that was big money. Somebody said something about somebody with a lot of clout is behind this. A lot of clout built the tech center. A lot of clout built Park Meadows. But then we heard from Mrs. Avery, who um, did not speak to us dressed in Chanel and, and in pearls. The advocates of this, more often than not, are small business operators. 
They are owner operators who, who do the work themselves, and we heard it. They, they build the fences. They, they're the plumbers. They're the contractors in our community who actually move to rural residential, probably one, because they could afford it, but two, it got them out of the city. It got them out of our towns. It got them out on the very piece of property that you folks in Surrey Ridge love about your properties. But it came with a barn. It came with a detached garage. It came with one of your 1,500 foot outbuildings that then they could make their workshop or just their storage site to park their equipment on, which again, we've heard over and over again, nobody here is really opposed to that. But this fixes that. This actually makes that allowance. Again, I ask us to hearken back to the advice that we did receive from um, our staff. Our zoning resolution does allow limited building on rural residential pro, uh, plots. It does not allow unlimited building. This amendment does not allow commercial structures to be built. It is again annotated very clearly. They must be accessory. They must first be residential in nature, nature and accessory use for businesses. Which is, brings me to my Final point, the question of actual square footage of use. We know elsewhere in the zoning resolution, the actual size of outbuildings that can be built are controlled. They are controlled there. Here we're just talking about business use. For a building that's there, that is a 3,000 square foot detached garage which we know are permitted, that are, are allowed through our rural residential areas. It just allows that full area to be used. If we have an instance where there is a barn that is on the property, again, it allows that barn to be used for this accessory business use. We've been through this so many times, and I think we've gotten it dialed in. We just need to make sure that we are actually following the written word. We are listening to our staff and our advice. And then guys, yeah, let's listen to the people. Because the thing that rings in my ears is nobody's really opposed to somebody being able to work on their property. Nobody's definitely opposed to be, being able to park their equipment inside their outbuildings. With all that put together, colleagues, I would submit to you, I, I think we've, we've gotten through this. We, we're at a good spot to make a decision here. We've done the work. We've, we've actually done the work to create a document that is enforceable. Again, I just remind everybody, we got here to this situation because we have an enforceable regulation, and all we're doing is tweaking it. And so I speak in favor of the motion, and I ask for I votes from my colleagues. C commissioners, real quick, and this will be important to ultimately to the decision you made. There was two resolutions in your packet, one for a 3,000 square foot maximum and the other without a limit. It was just limited to the within the buildings. Which resolution did you move to approve? Uh, the without a limit of business use within the one allowed outbuilding. Okay. And Commissioner Layden, that is the one you seconded as well? Without um, limitation? I did. Okay. Thank you. I did. Further discussion from the board. So I do have a question to clarify. <clears throat> Commissioner Till, you said we were here because a business owner was put out of business because of our regulations. Do you know if they're, the covenants in their neighborhood allowed their business? Um, Yes, I, in part of my review with the resident before bringing it to the board, uh, they did have a letter of support that was actually a part of their violation, uh, excuse me, that was a part of their class two permitting from their HOA. Okay. I, I still will not support an unlimited size of accessory building. We heard that over and over from the people who spoke. 
They did say they would support 1,500 square feet, and I'm willing to go to 3,000 square feet, but I think we need to put a limit on the size of the accessory building. Then, colleagues, I would say that Commissioner Thomas has just spoken in favor of this, of this motion. Commissioner Thomas, your wor exact words right now, we're an unlimited building size, but we've already heard That's not what I said, Commissioner Order, Teal. Chair, order, Chair, order. We have, well, would you like to restate it, please? Yes, I will restate this, that I am opposed to a resolution that allows unlimited size of accessory buildings. I personally support 1,500. We heard that from many people. I would be willing to support a 3,000 square foot accessory building if that would move this along because we did hear that from some of the people who spoke. Then, Chair, uh, again, I restate, Commissioner Thomas has spoken in favor of the motion because this amendment does not address size of building. It addresses building use. We have heard from staff that it is addressed elsewhere in the zoning resolution as to the actual size of permit buildings in rural residential. Any further dis discussion or comments from the board? I do not support an unlimited size of accessory building, and I will vote no. Well, I could say it again, that that is speaking in favor of the motion, because as we heard from staff, this amendment does not speak to accessory building size. It speaks to business use within a permitted accessory building. Okay, so staff, I think we've heard a lot from the board. We've certainly heard a lot from our, our citizens. And again, I want to thank everyone that has taken the time out of their day, not only today, um, but over the last year to engage in this issue. I know Commissioner Teal has taken this as an initiative of his, and I commend his leadership for carrying us through an entire year of work sessions um, and public comment. So thank you both in person and online for being here with us today. Um, so for staff, what I would ask, can you bring up the red line? Lines that show some of the inherent uh, or address the issues that were brought up in comment today? It may take a couple minutes, Commissioner. I'll log into the WebEx meeting and then we can present it that way if that's what you would like. Well, I think it's important to actually show the red lines because the original poll that was taken is very uh, different than where we are at today. And we know a lot of uh, changes, modifications, and amendments have occurred since that time based upon public input and feedback. So I just want to make sure that um, I'm clear, the board's clear, and that our, our, uh, the public is clear in terms of where we're at on the red lines. Uh, Chris, do you think I could get the um, the other link? Because this is a panelist, and I don't have the panelist password. Or unless Troy or yourself could chat that to me, please. And if you're just able to share your screen, I've got it open in front of me, the packet with all of the red lines. Is that something you're able to do? Just the... Oh, sorry, Commissioner. Did you want it on this big screen? Yes. Okay, perfect.
Commissioner, what we're waiting on is um, for CJ to be able to get onto the, or to be able to present this on the screen, we do need to get the invitation to the WebEx account. Um, so that's what we are waiting on right now. Well, in, in and Dan, that is coming. Sorry, go ahead. This is Troy. I just sent him the uh, password. Hang on just a moment, please. So and maybe while we're, CJ, take your time, no rush, we want to get this right, but um, maybe while we're waiting, Dan, walk us through um, some of the salient provisions. So first and foremost, um, we heard a lot about the word unlimited. So can you provide us some of those specific red lines and changes that have been made as a result of citizen comment? And then the, the answer that was originally provided at the beginning of this particular item around how the county restricts um, those accessory units? Yes, Commissioner. Um, so first and foremost, one of the um, one of the things that we had talked about was the um, let me pull this pull that document up. So one of the things that was mentioned was the ability to work from home. Um, that has not changed um, as for the latest uh, rendition that we had gone through um, as at the work session, uh, one of the items was that there would be a, the ability for staff to um, potentially uh, limit what could be used in for the class two home occupation uh, through things like compatibility with uh, neighborhoods. That was the provision that we had added uh, throughout this process um, to ensure that whatever structure this would be in was compatible with a neighborhood versus um, it, how it was written in the past was uh, a, in a rural uh, environment. Um, so how it, how it had been changed is to allow it in a neighborhood, so compatible with the neighborhood. Uh, so that would mean if you were to build a structure, like for instance, the steel building and staff was looking at uh, the potential of allowing a class two home occupation, somebody wanted to put a class two home occupation in a steel building and the neighborhood didn't have any steel buildings, that would, might be one reason why staff would be able to say no to a class two home occupation permit. Um, the, the other um, items that may prevent those things from happening uh, has, we gave a list earlier um, and really easements and those type of things that might prohibit a, a building from being too large um, to be able to do anything with. Um, in terms of other red lines, I, I think um, I think it would be probably more helpful for CJ to actually be able to walk through those red lines with you today um, and go through those individually. Is IT present in the room? Can you help CJ out just get that projected, please? In the meantime, Mr. Chair, if I may, may I read directly from the red line uh, for uh, section 2305.01? Please. You such may be conducted within the dwelling provided that the total area for such purpose shall not exceed 50% of the floor area of the dwelling, one permitted accessory structure, or both. Again, Chair, just to uh, reiterate, the amendment is silent as far as the square footage of the business use within the accessory structure, but it does not inherently, as written, permit a larger accessory structure than the, the preferred 3,000 square feet. 
Correct. So I think that's an important area of, of misinformation and maybe a, a narrative that we need to correct is that there are inherent limitations within the zoning resolution that ensure uh, that the sizes of these accessory units do not violate the character of the neighborhood. And I think what we just heard from staff, I, I wish you were able to pull it up and that's okay if you're not able to, but um, nothing in these amendments from what I'm reading would allow a structure to violate the existing character of, uh, of the residential community. Am I reading that right? Yes, sir, that is my read. Okay, that's my read as well. And a couple of other issues from my perspective. I, part of what we experienced uh, from our residents, and again, I think we heard from one individual that spoke to 370,000, 73,000 people that we represent. Um, many of those were deeply impacted by COVID and the, and the global pandemic, having to work from home, unable to travel to their places of business, uh, and trying to figure out how to have a home occupation that was in compliance with our zoning resolution. Um, I am not a fan of go government overreach, of government telling people how to use their property. Uh, and again, I think to reiterate what has, has been stated, there is a balance. Uh, no doubt, you know, that, that freedom to use your property as, as you see fit must always be balanced by the neighborhood concerns, ensuring that um, you're not violating the, the private property rights of others. When I read the amendments as they've been revised over this last year, it's very clear to me that any accessory unit cannot violate that residential nature of a community. So it is easy as pie for any member of Surrey Ridge or MacArthur Ranch to reach directly out to Michael Carey, who's our enforcement coordinator here at Douglas County, and ensure that our zoning resolution is supported. Um, I, I think the other issue too is I'm not interested in forcing our citizens to invest in off-site storage here or elsewhere that significantly impairs the value of their business or their investment. Um, we already, to Commissioner Teal's point, allow for two employees at a site. If we're asking our residents to spend more money that may, they may not have to invest in additional structures off-site or outside of their neighborhood for merely the ability to park their vehicles and have some additional storage. Uh, that is not a, a government role that, that I'm interested in, in supporting. Um, I, I think another really significant provision is in the red line right above the 2305, and I, I read it earlier. Oh, here we go. Thanks, guys. CJ, thank you. Appreciate it. Good job. So it says right there that the permission granted or implied by a class two home occupation permit shall not be construed as an exemption from applicable covenants, conditions, restrictions, architectural standards, or other private agreements and obligations. So, you know, I, I'm an old real estate attorney myself and I'm not gonna practice law here, but um, when you have a homeowners association or a private agreement or an obligation between neighbors, um, those are enforceable. And I, I think we heard from many that you don't wanna engage in litigation. I don't think that's necessary. The responsibility of a homeowners association is to support the homeowners. Um, and, and again, Surrey Ridge already has um, some measure of association. It sounds like they're limited in terms of their current functions. But if it isn't organized to the level that you need it to be, I think you need to organize. Um, I'm not interested in the county acting in a, a policeman role or in an enforcement role to go into your neighborhoods and start telling you what you can or can't do. Um, that is the role of the HOAs and they are clearly exempted from this amendment. So again, if you do have HOA covenants, conditions, restrictions, or architectural standards in place, none of these accessory structures can exist. So you have the power within your neighborhoods locally to control this however you'd like. Um, so I, I do find that compelling as well. I think for all of those reasons, we have seen a series of iterations that are more consistent um, with the needs of our community. I think balancing both private property rights um, and our zoning resolution. And so I will be in favor of the motion. Is there any further discussion? Okay, I am gonna call for a vote. So all those in favor signal by saying aye. Aye. Aye, any opposed? No. And that passes two to one. Again, I thank everyone for your time today. Um, we will move on to our final item for today's regular agenda before we go into our special meeting, uh, which is 
a resolution supplementing the 2022 adopted budget to appropriate unanticipated revenues and appropriate restricted assigned and unassigned fund balances in the amount of $13,766,152. Kim Hirsch for presenting for staff. Hi, Kim. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, for time constraints, I'm going to go really quickly, really topside on your supplemental. Today, I'm presenting the four supplemental for fiscal year 22. As mentioned, the total request for your consideration today is $13,766,152. This supplemental request for increasing appropriations. And I will ask if you're making your way, to, way out, if you can please do that and close the door, please. Thank you very much. Increasing appropriations for unanticipated revenues um, that have been received since budget adoption and appropriate fund balance for new initiatives. Within the board's packet, um, I provided detailed data of all the requests before you. Along with that, I provided all the fund summaries to allow you to recognize that each fund can absorb what I'm requesting for you today. The total amendment year to date, including the one presented for your approval this afternoon, is $95,966,116. And with this latest revised appropriation, the new amended budget for Douglas County will be $607,672,078. If you have any questions on any of the backup in the packet, I'd be happy to address. Kim, thank you very much. Are there any questions for staff? I have none. No, sir. And I have none either. Uh, with that, I'll open it up for any citizen comment on this final item for today's land use and public hearing. Any citizen comment on this item? Troy, do we have any citizen thank you, comment? I have, thank you, Commissioner. I have no online comment. Okay, and with that, I will close citizen comment and bring it back to the board for any further discussion and or a motion. I have a motion to approve a resolution supplementing the 2022 adopted budget to appropriate unanticipated revenues and appropriate restricted, assigned, and unassigned fund balances in the amount of $13,766,152. Second. So there's a first and second on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 And that carries 3-0. Thank so you. That, thank you very much, Kim. And that will close our land use and public hearing. Uh, we'll take about a five-minute recess and reconvene um, for our final special meeting this afternoon. Thank you.